uh, those are the expression of the reluctances. And this is the expression of the flux. Now, the flux density, of course, uh, phi equals to uh, uh, BG equals to phi over AG. We see here that the that the, the area, the cross section area, is given the same. Yes, here we are, we are calculating the total flux. Yes, this is the total flux. Yeah. If we, uh, if we, uh, if we want to calculate if, if the leakage flux is considered, the leakage flux from the expression of the total flux. Okay. I will, I will uh, explain it in the board uh, to be more clear. Okay, so the total flux here, the total flux phi equals to F uh, over R. Okay, and equals total flux also equals to the linkage flux uh, plus the leakage. Uma fizuz L, L, bsah L and the leakage. Okay, so in the air gap, we are going to use only the linkage flux because who are flux lead has been transferred to the other side or has been transferred through uh, the core let's go to the to the presentation to the slide yes we have now 42 participants good uh, okay now the inductance we said that the inductance can be calculated in uh, in two ways it can be found from the from the in term of reluctance n squared over the total of reluctances and it can be found from the linkage flux which is xi xi is equal to n uh, times phi over i so you see that we have the same result okay If we have, uh, okay, okay. If we have to wind this, attach it in series. Do they affect always? If we have uh, two winding, I think uh, we just can add uh, their uh, their flux. Maybe we are gonna see uh, those cases in the recitation. So I didn't uh, get how to identify between the linkage flux and the total flux. Okay. اشرح لك بالدرجة. اوكي. هكذا باش باش تبان واضحة. اوكي. قلنا توتال فلاكس فيه بارت يضيع في الهواء فويت ليكج معناها فويت راح يضيع يتسرب. And there is another part which is the useful part اللي راح يمشي في الكور. اوكي. That's it. So this is uh, the part اللي يضيع is the leakage flux فويت and the part which will transfer it to the other part to the other part in the magnetic circuit called uh, linkage which is the useful flux will be transferred the useful flux will be transferred to into another form for example if we have transformer it will be transferred to voltage if we have uh, maybe a motor it will be transferred to torque so this is uh, the difference between total flux and uh, total flux and I hope that this example uh, is clear. Even the exercises of recitation, I think they are not too complicated. Yani they will be solved in different ways. You see that, as I said, uh, really we have a lot of expressions, but all of them yani can be applied directly. Uh, okay. And you see in my presentation, you see in my presentation that all the key uh, expressions are in there from uh, an orange uh, rectangular. So you can just save those expressions. So let's see uh, here. This is the uh, the last thing in this first part of the presentation. Uh, what time now? Uh, 
uh, okay, we can pass to the other part. Uh, okay, I know there is a, a football game today. Okay, so let's see this last slide. Okay, the last slide is uh, appendix. Just I want to mention some uh, magnetic materials. As I said, we have three types of materials, diamagnetic, paramagnetic, and ferromagnetic materials. Uh, you can see here, this is, for example, if we have this, in case of diamagnetic materials, the magnetic field line will avoid this material, okay? Will not transfer in this material. So this type of these materials cannot be used to transfer the flux. For example, we have copper. The copper is useful for to transfer electricity, but it's not useful to transfer uh, the magnetic field or the magnetic flux. Gold, silvers, uh, alcohol, air, okay. And we have uh, paramagnetic materials. Here, in this case, they said that the lines prefer to pass through uh, the material, but not all of them. So we have just small amount of uh, field lines that transfer it in case of uh, paramagnetic materials. Uh, examples like the uh, aluminium, platinum, oxygen. And the case of the ferromagnetic materials, which will be used in the magnetic circuits, the lines, uh, all of lines will be, or, or most of the lines will be transferred in the core, as you see here. And of course, we told that we have iron, cobalt, and nickel. Uh, the main three uh, magnetic uh, materials. So this is concerning the first part of the of this course. Now let's see the second part. Okay. So I don't think that this part will be end today. So we are gonna organize another meeting, inshallah, this week. So this part we are gonna see the. Ma the magnetizing curve, which is an important thing, the magnetizing curve, the hysteresis loop in magnetic circuit, magnetic core losses, and induced voltage and induced force. Okay, so this part is very important to understand the behavior of the electric machines. So many, some expressions we are gonna see here, you are gonna need it later in the other uh, machines. So, are you seeing the second presentation now? Yes, in the chat, right, yes? Yes. Okay, so, okay. So this is, this one is the second presentation. Okay. So, Let's talk a bit about uh, how magnetism or magnetizing happened in the ferromagnetic materials. Okay. So the ferromagnetic materials are materials that easy to magnetize. So with the ferromagnetic materials, uh, the most of the field line will be transferred through these materials. So those materials are easy to magnetize and they have high relative permeability. Okay. Can we had um, a student, uh, I, each one, I, each time I add, add him, uh, it will ask again, I don't know why. Okay. So, the ferromagnetic materials are materials uh, easy to magnetize, uh, and have uh, high relative permeability. Okay, you see this figure. Okay, this is a microscopic a pic a figure. I'm oh, sorry. It's a microscopic figure of uh, ferromagnetic materials. You can see the crystals of these materials, the crystal. Uh, you can see here in this figure. The, the crystals of these materials, each one, each one of these can be considered as a small magnet, and we call these domains. Okay, each one of these 
you see these squares and they have different orientation. You can see here arrows. They have different orientation. Each one of these can be considered as a small magnet. And we call these domains. When these materials, uh, when, the, uh, when a magnetic field across these materials, when the magnetic field here, H, in this direction, cross this material. So the case A, if the material is not magnetized, we don't have any magnetic field. The tiny domains are oriented ra randomly. So each one of these small magnets are oriented in different direction because here the material is not magnetized. When a magnetic field H is applied, those domains uh, start to be aligned in the direction of the magnetic field. You can see here B, in case B, if the magnetic field H is applied, the number of domains aligned with the magnetic field will increase. So here you can see that those domains start aligned in the direction of the magnetic field. As we said, those domains are the crystals of this material and, we, and are, they are considered as a small magnets. At the end, when we increase the strength of the magnetic field, when we increase the intensity of the magnetic fields, all domains, as you see here, all domains will be oriented to the direction of the magnetic field. Let's see uh, a video. Okay. Uh, are you seeing the video? Yes. Okay. So here, as I said, the, the domains are considered as uh, small, small magnets. Okay. So those are the domains. Each one has uh, a different direction. So they they are oriented randomly. So now, when we increase the the strength of the magnetic field, they start to be aligned in one direction. Are you seeing it? So I will repeat. So when we start to increase the strength of the magnetic field, you see that those domains or those tiny small magnets start to be oriented in one direction, which is the direction of the magnetic field. And this is the case, the the mag here in this case the the material is fully uh, magnetized is it clear or not yes i will repeat it again so so this is because it's in physical aspects of the material uh, manage material science but the ferromagnetic materials it is divided into domains crystals. Those crystals can be considered as small magnets. Each one of these magnets can be considered as uh, uh, can be considered as small magnet. When we apply a magnetic field, those magnets, they start to align it in one direction. Okay, so you can see that those magnets are aligned in uh, one direction and this case is when the materials is fully magnetized and we call it a uh, saturation case let's go back to the presentation so see see with the increase of the magnetic field strength h all domains are aligned with the magnetic field as shown in this figure okay next slide now, let's see the magnetizing curve. Which, what is the magnetizing curve? Is when we plot, uh, when we plot uh, a, a B uh, in terms of H. So the BH characteristics is shown in the figure number two. is known as a magnetizing curve. So it shows the behavior of the three regions of uh, the domain. So here, for uh, at zero, so this is H, the field intensity, and here in the y-axis we have the flux density, which is B. So at zero, the material is not 
magnetized. So when we start increase H here, when we start increase H, of course B it will get increased. So and we see from the expression of B that they are proportional. They can be considered proportional because B equal to mu times H. So here with the increase of with the increase of H B gets increased. And we call this the linear region. So here it's a linear region because H and B are increased proportionally. Okay. Now in the in the in the region two, when the domains start to be aligned in one direction, so the variation here it's not linear. It's nonlinear. It's nonlinear variation. And we call this knee region. Knee and rukba, and jay bshikil ta rukba. Okay, this second region can be called knee region, or we can be called uh, uh, nonlinear region. And at the end, when all the domains are aligned with one direction, the material gets saturated, and it should burn. So now here, B, it will not increase anymore. Whatever you increase H, B, it will not get increased. So this is the BH characteristics. It can be divided, divided into three regions. The linear region, when we increase H. Of course, H, it can be increased by the current. H, in the, you know, we know, we have seen from Ampere's law, H equals to N I over L, over L. So it can be increased by the number of turns or it can be increased by the current. So at the beginning in the linear region, whatever I increase H, B gets increased because they are proportional. Then when the material starts to be magnetized, now B and H will not uh, variate proportionally. Okay, so we call this knee region or it can be called nonlinear region. And at the end, we increase H, but B will not increase anymore, and we call this a saturation region. So here, the flux density B increase almost linearly in the region, so in the first region. With the increase of H, B starts to become nonlinear, and we call this a knee region. Then at the end, the magnetic materials show the effect of saturation, so no increase of B. And here, you can see here, in this, uh, in this curve or in this graph, uh, the, the BH characteristic of, uh, of some materials, because they are not, they don't have the same behavior. In, the case, in this case, for example, we have a silicon sheet steel, and here we have a cast steel, and here we have a cast iron. So, here the values of H and here the values of uh, B. So the, the BH curve or the magnetizing curve, it's different from material. Yes, in the saturation, all the domain are aligned, of course. So is it clear this uh, BH characteristic? Because we need it in the electric machines. We can obtain it by an, uh, an experiment called the, the open circuit. We can obtain this, uh, this curve for any type of electric machine. So uh, I think it's time. Okay. So is it clear concerning this, uh, concerning this, uh, concerning this uh, BH curve. I think we stop here because the, the next element, the next element need more explanation, which called the, uh, the hysteresis loop. This one is the hysteresis loop. It will be explained next time, inshallah, because it's need a lot of, exp uh, and lot of explanation, okay. So I should, I think we can stop here. Look, uh, we